Here we are back to our regularly scheduled programming with the first actual recipe of the year. I'm excited to get back into the groove of things, spend some time off, but it's too much time. I missed you guys. I'm starting off the year by thanking one of my patrons. If you don't know what Patreon is, it's a website that helps creators like me get the support from people like you in order to help fund the show. There are tiers, so you can kind of give a specified amount, a larger amount, a smaller amount, anything you can. And depending on those tiers, you get something in return. Most of the tiers aren't anything like wild. The main thing is getting on the post credits of my videos, but on the higher levels, there are a few things that I'm offering. And one of them is making a custom video for that Patreon. Thankfully, one of my patrons, Tamara Harp, was generous enough to donate to that tier. She's one of my producers and she gets a very special video to her own. The deal is she gets to give a request. Basically, we just talked about what she liked anything she wanted to learn and she came back with salmon with crispy skin and that worked perfectly with what I was trying to do this episode which is lighten things up a little bit we had a lot of meat in November and December a lot of cheese cream potatoes all that kind of good stuff but it's about time our bodies are craving something a little lighter I try to always listen to my body and right now it's telling me to eat something fresh something clean something healthy thanks to Tamara's suggestion this is a perfect episode for that so the basic rundown is I'm just gonna show you how to make the basic technique of cooking a piece of salmon with the skin on and getting that skin crispy. And then I'm just gonna serve it up with a simple, light, healthy vinaigrette. That's gonna kind of be the sauce for the fish. I love using vinaigrettes as a sauce on things like chicken and fish. It's a light way of creating something very flavorful. And it's just a bit healthier than making a sauce with butter, which is what we learned how to do in the last two months. Heavy duty sauces mounted with lots of butter. This is sort of a reprieve from all of that. So Tamara, this one's for you. Thank you so much for being a patron. Thanks for supporting me for this whole year. Thanks for all the love. Hopefully this is sending some back at you. Let's get right into it. First tip I learned is when you go shopping for fish, tell them you, you need a nice, beautiful piece of fish because you're making a video for YouTube. And they go into the back, they pull out a fresh, beautiful piece that's not in the display. They cut a nice center cut piece for you. And then they put it in this nice container, which they normally would just put it into a bag that gets all squished up with the rest of your groceries. And I just thought that was really nice. It won't hurt nobody if you just do that on the regular. We'll keep it between you and I. So we got a nice fish. I asked for a nice center cut piece. First thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure all the pin bones are out. And then when you get it, you wanna feel it and make sure that none of them are in there as well. Those are just very unpleasant to bite and they're really lazy at removing them in a lot of grocery stores. So just make sure you run your finger through the spine, make sure all the bones are out. Give it a smell. It shouldn't smell like very fishy. There's gonna have this oily, fishy odor to it and that's just the nature of the salmon, but it should not smell foul and stink up the house. He did a nice job of trimming it for me. Got a little bit of scales I can see so I just want to take a paper towel and just clean off all the excess stuff on the skin and just always when you're dealing with fish and stuff like that always keep your board clean sop up any of the moisture any scales that might be on the skin All right, so my man actually didn't even scale the fish. That was a pain. You don't want to do that at home. That's not fun to do. It gets the scales everywhere, so do your best to make sure that your guy knows what he's doing. Now the trick with salmon is we want the skin to get crispy. And the problem with it is it's got this sort of shape to it that is gonna make the skin seize up and kind of dome over when you're cooking it. And thanks to Gordon Ramsay, there's a little bit of a trick to kind of get around that. And it's just gonna take scoring the skin lengthwise like this by just kind of bending it up like that and then running the knife through so we're just gonna go ahead and make those scores so just kind of sitting up like that and then just make a little cut like that into the fish do a few close to each other and that's gonna get the skin nice and crispy You don't want to cut too deep into the fish, just enough to kind of score it.
What that scoring is going to do is it's going to help prevent it from seizing up. And we're just going to apply gentle pressure when we put it into the pan with the oil. That's going to keep that skin nice and flat and get it nice and crisp before we flip it over. Getting the crispy skin is basically just about cooking it on the skin side first and cooking the fish 75 to 80% of the way through on the skin side. And that's going to give it time to get crispy. You're going to be able to see the heat rising through the fish and you're going to be able to tell when it's done and when it's not cooked. Flip it, kiss the other side of the meat. You want to be perfect about it. You pull it off the heat when the internal temp of the thickest part hits about 125 degrees and then that's going to rest to a perfect medium rare where the center of the salmon is going to be just a little bit pink and the rest is going to be cooked through. Anything after that, just pull it at 130 or 135 degrees and it's going to be perfectly cooked all the way through but nice and juicy. So first we want to get this seasoned. We're just going to let it dry brine and some salt for about 30 minutes. Let that flavor kind of seep in. And I want to do it on both sides because I have these little gaps I want to get that seasoning in. That salt's also going to help get that skin crispy. Got a new pepper mill. I thought I needed to graduate from these cheap little guys, but I just wanted to show you, you don't need fancy stuff to cook. You just get one of these, you got fresh cracked pepper. Just don't use pre-ground black pepper because that's a mystery I just don't like. It's a flavors off, there's nothing like a fresh ground pepper. And then you can adjust the size of the grind every time so that one of these is worth investing in. So I'm just gonna let put that in the refrigerator, let that sit for 30 minutes, try and dry that skin out before we cook it. While that's chilling in the fridge, we can get started on making our little sauce. It's like any basic vinaigrette we usually make. It's gonna consist of some lemon, some Dijon mustard, a little bit of honey, olive oil, salt, and pepper. And I think I'm gonna add a little bit of fresh thyme. So we're just gonna throw this together. If you need a lesson on how to make vinaigrettes, then I'll leave a link down below. And let's just get right into this. First thing we're gonna start with is a little bit of lemon. It's like a sauce. What happened was before I added the mustard, it tasted too much like sweet lemon. It didn't taste bad, but I was going for more of this mustard forward flavor. And then when you add more mustard, it also adds this viscosity that thickens it up. Now it has more of a rounded flavor. We added a lot of lemon. That was a huge lemon. So when I say use one lemon, that's assuming it's like a normal size lemon on a smaller side. That was very big, but that's the thing with vinaigrettes is like, I can't tell you a specific amount of all these things. Your taste is different than mine. I like things a little bit more on the acidic side. Some people don't prefer that. A vinaigrette, in my mind, it's not about a recipe, but it's about figuring out your taste and just following the technique. So now I know it's unseasoned. I have to add salt. I wanna be pretty bold with it. I'm gonna to start to add a little bit of thyme. This is also gonna add a nice flavor to it. It's nice, it's bright, it's gonna go perfectly with the fish. You could add a little bit of vinegar to this. It would be really nice, like a little white vinegar, a little champagne vinegar, maybe a little red wine vinegar. That would balance it out even more. It's fine in its own right, but just for fun, let's see what a little bit of vinegar does. Vinegar just mellows out that strong lemon flavor. So I know there's two acids in there, but they're two different types of acids. A citrus is different than vinegar, even though they're both considered acids, they do different things. That's why adding both of them isn't something redundant. But now it's perfect. So I got my salmon here. Just gonna pat this skin dry before I get it on the stove. Moisture does not help with crispy skin, so you always wanna make sure. Anything you wanna get crispy, you get dry first. I've got my fish. I've got some thyme, which I'm gonna throw into the pan. A little bit of garlic that I just want to smash up like that. So like I said, I'm just gonna put a little olive oil in the pan, no butter, we're going healthy today. We're gonna add these guys about halfway through the cooking process. I'm gonna get this in the oil skin side down on relatively high heat, medium high heat. Once I see the heat kind of creeping up the sides and it's getting about 50% of the way, I'm gonna drop the heat down to medium low. Then I'm gonna add the thyme and the garlic. Once I'm okay with where it's at and the skin is crispy, I'm gonna flip it, kiss the other side, and just sort of baste the top 
with these flavors, and I'm gonna call it a day. So let's just get over to the stove. Okay, I got a thing in my back right now, hold on. This leaning over thing is catching up to me. Okay, so this is delicious. You got this crispy skin. It's crispy enough to be tender and adds texture. And then you have this perfectly cooked, juicy, just perfectly cooked, nice and tender, moist. And you have this really fresh sauce. You get brightness from the herbs. Tamara, I think you're all set. This bottom end over here isn't as crispy because it's kind of like the tapered end. So when you're getting it started, maybe you want to make sure you got pressure over at that thin end just so that gets crispy. Other than that, I'm super happy with the skin. You can cook it to the temperature that you like. If you like it done a little bit more, pull it off the heat when it gets to about 135 degrees, 140. All that kind of stuff's gonna cook it all the way through. It's gonna still be a little juicy. It might dry out a little bit, but there you have it. Tamara, thank you so much for all your support. Thanks to all my other patrons. If you wanna be a patron, if you wanna get one of these made for you, the link is in the description, so go check it out. It would mean the world to me to have your support. Help me fund this bad boy for the foreseeable future it means the world to me. Something's happening with my back, so that's the end of this one. Ah, thank you so much for watching, guys. Something's going on with my back. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just all the bad posture. Tamara, thanks again. Really appreciate it. Thank you to all my Patreons scrolling right now. Again, if you want to check that out, there's a link in the description and a box somewhere on the screen right now. If you guys haven't catched my last video, it's this insane one hour step-by-step -step guide on exactly how I make videos and my whole philosophy around the show. If you have ever wondered about how to get into YouTube, if you have dreams of being a YouTuber or making videos, this is maybe the one video you need to watch. So it should be right here. Otherwise, that's all that I have. I need to go crack my back. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself.